Self direction was one of our uh, most popular features uh, at Google, and it was um, developed and launched by some amazingly brilliant uh, engineers who had the following insight: that no matter how badly you misspell a world on the internet, a word on the internet, it is guaranteed that at least one other person misspelled it exactly the same way. Um, so. Uh, what the, these folks did is try to watch anonymized search tra transactions to figure out what you meant. So for example, um, for one year, one very, very sad year, the number one search key, search traffic, was the name Britney Spears. Um, it's very tragic. But Britney Spears' name is spelled oddly. She spells her name B-R-I-T-N-E-Y. In American English, the most common spelling of Britney is B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y. So people would come in and they would type B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y Spears hit return, they'd get a million results. They'd click on the top result, because remember, someone else misspelled it the same way you did. They'd go to a web page about Britney Spears, but if the person who wrote that web page didn't know how to spell her name, the content's probably not very good. So they would hit back, they'd be back at Google, and then they would type some other spelling, B-R-I-T-T-E-N-Y, and they'd do the same thing. they click on the first result, come back, and they'd kind of wander around the spelling space until they came to B-R-I-T-N-E-Y Spears. They clicked on the top result, and we never saw them again. I didn't know who you were. I didn't care who you were. What I had was a now an anonymized search trail. And that search trail taught me that if you started at B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y Spears, you probably were going to end up at B-R-I-T-N-E-Y Spears. Uh, and so we launched spell correction based on that. And because that statistical technique was very powerful, we were able to launch it in dozens of languages, which is an incredibly hard problem, which a bunch of us in early AI had tried to solve using machine learning and just didn't work. However, statistical you know, mechanics, if you will, able to create this incredibly powerful feature. And they were able to create it, to loop back to, the, to your question, for two reasons. One is Norving's law, which says that for every time you double the number of cases you have in an ML technique, you increase the quality by the square root of two, which is a pretty big number. Uh, and by a corollary, which says every time you double the number of signals you use, you increase quality by the square root of three, which is also a very big number. And so you start out with an insight that these search transactions have meaning. You keep adding cases and ultimately adding signals, and you get to a place where you can learn very specific, highly valuable features. But you can't solve the problem of being precisely right in a relatively crisp data set. Right? So if we suggested a bad spelling of Britney Spears' name, somebody would have posted a picture of it and made fun of us, but nobody was hurt. In contrast, if you're trying to say exactly that Eric Schmidt, having the quality of that result degrade is problematic. And I think what you're seeing in this kind of, at least you see it in our business, and this makes a part in science, is there is dimensionality of underwriting, and I think dimensionality of, of the social graph, which is high enough and hard enough that you can't get there with the machines. You can't actually push, as Gucci said, you can't push that extra piece of computation out yet because the dimensionality is not possible. And that's what I think yields the difference between our solutions. Yeah.